I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. I thought I would update my comedy power rankings. Here they are. You ready? Number one, Joe Rogan. I feel like Joe Rogan is at the top of the power rankings right now. Everybody's talking about his podcast for good reasons and sometimes bad reasons. And he's been in some controversies lately about the podcast and the whole Spotify thing. And Joe Rogan, number one this week on my comedy power rankings. Number two, I'm going to list Jim Gaffigan. I think his recent tweet storm showed the secret power of Jim Gaffigan. And I know from looking at what's popular on my shows on Live by Live that everybody enjoys clicking on Jim Gaffigan comedy clips. So Jim Gaffigan, you are number two. Number three on the comedy power rankings, I'm going to say Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, The world was clearly less fun this summer when Jimmy Kimmel took a break and he hosted the Emmys this week and he's back on late night. And I I just feel like he's a force for good. Number three, Jimmy Kimmel. Number four on the power rankings, Dave Chappelle. Basically, everything Dave Chappelle does gets paid a lot of attention to. And I loved his little dig at the critics the other day uh, when Dave won his Emmy and he told everybody to go F themselves for the criticism. Dave Chappelle, you were number four. And another comedian whose every action gets noticed by the press and covered here on Daily Comedy News. You're number five in the comedy power rankings. Ricky Gervais. Just because. So there you go. One Rogan, two Gaffigan, three Kimmel, four Chappelle, five Gervais. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You can comment on the Facebook page or hit me up at DCN Pod and tell me that I'm an idiot. All right. From the late night shows, remember the president wanted to use a heat ray against protesters? Stephen Gobert said, to be fair, the administration doesn't just want to expose people to a deadly virus. They also want to flame royal protesters. Trevor said, damn, I can't believe this is real life. Federal police wanted to use a heat ray against peaceful protesters outside the White House. At this point, guys, can we admit Trump is essentially a real life Bond villain. Trevor, again, by the way, what a crazy way to learn that America's military has a heat ray. This is the same country that can't find money for veterans or health care or teachers, but somehow has a giant microwave gun just lying around, you know, just in case we want to hot pocket the Middle East. Fallon said, sorry, what, a heat ray? Who are his advisors? A bunch of minions stacked on top of each other? Fallon was like, even Kim Jong-un was like, "Uh, that's pretty messed up, dude. Fallon again, a heat ray. Apparently Trump ripped a page out of the X-Men comic and was like this. Colbert, okay, there's been a lot of back and forth about these protests. But if anyone is still wondering who the bad guys are in this conflict, it might be the ones who say the protesters are at the gates. Bring forth the heat ray. And Colbert said the heat ray produces a magnetic field similar to a microwave, strong enough to hurt like crazy without leaving burns. Of course, to heat your protesters evenly, you're going to want them to stand on a rotating plate. Hannibal Burris told WESA that his new special's release during the wave of racial justice protests was coincidental. Hannibal said it was weird for it to line up like that, but unfortunately, it's something that's always relevant to the conversation. He talked about the incident in Miami where he was arrested, and he said, As a police officer, you should be more mature than a drunk comedian on the street. And he confirmed the following story. He said, I really did ask for some chapstick when he was arrested. He said, yo, I don't want to be chap lipped in this mugshot. So hook me up. (laughs) He's also excited about his parking lot tour. He said, when else are you going to see me in Butler, Pennsylvania in a parking lot? Chris Rock spoke to The Hollywood Reporter, a lengthy piece. Uh, They talked about Chris making the transition from being a young comic to a more seasoned one. And Chris said he had to find a dramatic base to his comedy, saying, You could still be funny, you could be hysterical, but you've got to be hysterical like Midnight in Paris is hysterical, like Vicky Cristina Barcelona is hysterical, like every Alexander Payne movie is hysterical. I have no idea what Chris Rock is talking about there. I understood about one third of the words that I just read. He talks about his early years and he said, I had this great combination of big ego and low self-esteem. And the ego gets you out on stage, but the low self-esteem is the thing that makes you practice so much because you don't believe in yourself at all. You think you're a total fraud, and you don't think anybody could love you for being you, so you have to be good at this thing. Fear was a good motivator, but he says it took a toll on his act, his relationship, his entire sense of self, right up until he couldn't take it anymore. He said, it just depletes you. I had to let it go. I was just dying, dude. So now at age 55, he's in therapy. NPR critic Eric Deegans wrote... Chris Rock went from being that kid who acts like a watered-down Eddie Murphy to the straight-up voice of a generation. Doors flew open. Rock's heroes became his friends and often his collaborators. Richard Pryor said, does he remind me of me? I'm afraid so. That is high praise from Richard Pryor. 
For some reason, Cheat Sheet decided to write about Jerry Seinfeld this week. It was just a recap of some old stories, but hey, it's the weekend. I'll share it with you. During a discussion in 2015, Jerry admitted that the audience at colleges are too politically correct to find some of his topics humorous. Jerry said, I don't play colleges, but I hear a lot of people tell me, don't go near colleges. They're so PC. They just want to use these words. That's racist. That's sexist. That's prejudice. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. He told Variety, I don't think if you're going into a theater and it's only one quarter full and everybody's got 10 feet between them, I don't know if that's worth doing. For me, I'm going to wait till everyone does feel comfortable gathering. I'm happy to wait. I don't want to compromise the experience. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow's episode is about this bizarre fight between Jerry Seinfeld and Bobcat Goldthwait, of all people. A lot of fun tomorrow. Don't miss that one. Michael Ian Black spoke to the New York Times. They asked, hey, Michael Ian Black, what's the most interesting thing you've learned from a book recently? Michael Ian Black said... Right when the lockdown started, I decided to read Robert Cairo's The Power Broker. I had a vague idea of Robert Moses' history of road building in New York, but I had no idea that he basically created the entire New York park system and all that it entailed, nor did I have any real sense of the wealth out on Long Island in the early part of the 20th century. Great Gatsby wealth. Ridiculous, ridiculous wealth. Speaking of books, NPR reminds us that Colin Quinn's new book is called overstated a coast-to-coast roast of the 50 states vermont is the old hippie florida is the hot mess wisconsin is the diet starts tomorrow wow this sounds amazing colin quinn longtime friend jerry seinfeld remember him i mentioned him like a minute ago he says quinn has a really really powerful x-ray AI about people in situations and this is kind of the essence of comedy We have a bit of a similar approach. We really love to spend time doing real writing, and we're proud of it, and we struggle with it. And there's not a lot of stand-up comics that do that. Ooh, that's a little teaser for tomorrow's episode about the fight with Bobcat. Check that out. Colin says the joke writing process doesn't work without an audience. He says the audience is such a part of our creative process. You really work out all your material with the crowd. They do all the editing. The audience is such a part of our creative process. You really work out with all your material in the crowd. They do all the editing, and uh, my wife has the smoke alarm going off, so I'm going to go deal with that. That means that's it for your comedy news for today. I'll see you tomorrow.